we talked a couple weeks ago uh, about we, we need to get more Islander talk on here. Ever since we've done that, it's been absolute hell for you guys. So uh, it's actually been a little better this week, but yeah, overall. <laughs> yeah. So the Islanders, who they were two, one, and three before last night, but they fell and now they're at NHL 500 since uh, the month of December started and they came back to play. Right now they're sitting in last place in the Metro. You get back Brock Nelson, but you, you lose Matt Barzell. And Anthony, uh, I actually prepped uh, a video for you guys on this one because it sort of feels like this. Islanders injuries and COVID protocol players are just piling up. I think we better start over, don't you? What? Ryan Pollock, four to six weeks, lower body injury. <laughs> injury, Brock Nelson, two to four weeks. One next. Where are we going? Yeah. Which way? Focus. Which way? Oh, man. List of COVID players. What? Come find me when you wake up. Okay, do it. But that's the way it feels right now for you, right? It's just <laughs> in the head at the end, right? Anthony is not laughing. He was laughing at it yesterday. But Anthony, this is where I got to direct this question first. Are the Islanders problems solely COVID related or is there something more on the surface? I mean, there's definitely more on the surface. So COVID didn't, COVID didn't help things. Um, but, you know, look, I, I said I was trying to be glass half full guy because, I mean, if I go the other way, I could put myself into a full out depression. I don't want to do that. So, um, you know, compared to their, you know, win the streak where they didn't win in 10 games, you know, two, two and three is is much is a much bigger improvement. However, um, to get back in the playoff picture and they need to play a lot better than a 500 pace. Um, so with that said, that it that is a good step in the right direction. Um, but, you know, they they. They still have a lot to figure out. Uh, you know, I I think once Ryan Pollock comes back, um, hope, I mean, I don't think he's skating yet, so he's maybe at least two to three weeks away still. Um, but if he comes back and then they get past, you know, Barzell obviously will be out of COVID and, you know, probably miss the next five games. Once they get their full team back, you know, we could see what could happen then. Maybe they get into a rhythm. But um, like I said, guys, I, I think overall this was just a really, you know, I'm trying to think of what to equate it to. Um, you know, if you get if you get off to a bad start in something, so, and things pile up, and you can't really catch up. And I think with the Islanders, they just the 13 game road trip, the stops and starts, the COVID. I think eventually it all became too much for them, um, and you know, thing things got away. I mean, I, I think they are going to be a better team going. You know, as we get later in the season, I, I'm just beginning to think. I don't know. Because let's it's gonna ha they're gonna have to rattle rattle off maybe eight wins in a row or like they did a year or two ago where they won like in a fifteen game stretch they only lost like once you know they 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 really need something like that to get back in it and it's hard to do at this level I mean we don't see it all the time um, but that's the type of hockey that they're gonna have to play to get back into it so um, impossible no but improbable mm. so you know. It's an uphill battle, but they got to take it one game at a time. Uh, you know, I, I think I think the other thing is too is let's face it, we we talked about it. Their defense, um, you know, Char has been better since the season started, but you know he's still not an everyday NHL defender. Um, same thing with Andy Green. Uh, so I mean, Robin Salo got back in the lineup after being scratched for a while in lieu of Aho, um, but you know it's 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 their crutch. You know, Barry Trotz usually. Uh, has the Islanders play a really, really structured style of defense, and it's been their strength since ever since he took over. Um, and I think, again, you know, and I'll admit, I think getting rid of Letty was good because it freed up cap space, but then, you know, Lou Lamorello didn't replace him with anybody. I mean, well, sorry, you replaced him with Zay to Daniel Chara, and that's not a viable replacement for Nick yeah. Letty. I mean, total, two totally different players, and it's sad to look at if you if you look to two years ago, the Islanders' left side was Adam Pellick, Nick Letty, 
Well, Adam Pellick, Devon Taves, Nick Letty. I mean, you kidding me? I mean, that's that's a, that's a strong left side defense. Um, and then you know they lost Taves and Letty um, for cap moves, and it's it's hurt them. Um, and then that's and, not to mention that. And then you lose Eberly too. Yeah, you lost yeah. Jordan Eberly. I think he's got like 13 goals or such. I mean, you could say in Islanders system, he probably doesn't have 13, but you know, he had that chemistry of Barzell. Um, and Andrews Lee. And you know, the, the, the thing with me that I have a hard time kind of like wrapping my head around is that the fact that, you know, Kyle, before the Islanders acquired Kyle Palmieri, he was a, con- I mean, he was the model of consistency for five years in a row. He had 24 goals or more. Um, that's pretty good. And he comes to the Islanders and all of a sudden he can't score. It doesn't, it doesn't, I know Trotz's system plays a little bit of a role in that, but it doesn't make sense how a guy could be so consistent scoring goals and he has one goal in the year. I mean, here's the gripe that I have. That hurts. The gripe that I have is why is it that this team chose a wild card like Palmieri over keeping Jordan Eberle, who was a proven top six forward that had real good chemistry with two of your team's best forwards and is more of a facilitator than Kyle Palmieri is. And not only that, but Jordan Eberle was good for you guys in the playoffs too. So why, why did Palmieri Lou Lamarillo choose him? Why did Lou Lamarillo choose Palmieri over Eberle? Uh, I mean, the only thing I could say is I think they like that Palmieri – played a heavier, grittier game in the playoffs, and Eberly not so much. And, you know, Trotz, Barry Trotz is all grit and defense, and I think that ultimately um, that ultimately won out. Uh, so, Phil, I, I, I agree with you. The only thing I'll say, you said wild. I don't – again, I don't really necessarily classify Palmieri as a wild card just because he was so consistent with scoring with New Jersey. I'm saying so, wild card in, in the sense that you didn't know how he was going to fit with the team. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. going forward, like, yeah, like I think he had two goals in the regular season last year and six in the playoffs. Yeah, he yeah. was good in the playoffs. Yeah, he um, was good in the playoffs. But the other thing I want to I want to ask you here because this this comment actually kind of makes me think, and I want to see your thoughts on it. Leo saying that, and I've talked to him about this a couple of times before that Lou has really kind of messed with the future of the team. What do you think of that? Oh, I mean that. I think actually, if you look at the off season he had, you know, he got rid of Vlad's contract. He, he moved out a lot of contracts and gave them cap space. Cause for a while we all thought, you know, this team is going to be in trouble cap wise. And mm-hmm. he got rid of a lot of contracts to the point where next se- like this coming season, they're actually in great shape cap wise. You know, they're going to have Varlamov, um, you know, has one year left. They might move him, but the cap He's definitely isn't, gone. The cap yeah. isn't. Yeah. The cap really isn't a problem with the Islanders anymore. So in that regard, in terms of the future, I think the Islanders are fine there. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about like the assets, really, the that's assets, what I want, think. If you want to talk about the assets, yeah, you know, he, he traded a first the last couple of years, you know, got Pajot and, and Palmieri. Um, so that, that could go with, with, you know, making a plus side for this argument right here. But at the same time, you know, he, he does have the core of the Islanders in place that are young. Borzell, Wallstrom, Dobson, um, you know, Sorokin. Pelican and Pollock are locked up. He did a great job signing them to contract. So Brock Nelson. So they, they still, they're still in good shape in that regard. Um, and the last thing I'll add to that, the Nick Letty trade hurt them in the now, but that second round pick in that trade, he got, you know, all to Ratu with that. And, you know, he's ascended to, you know, he's the Islanders best prospect. So that, that's a good ad for the future. So no, I don't, I don't, I, I'm 50-50 on that. I, I think some of that's really incorrect, and I think there's some credence to it as well. Um, I don't think Lou – I don't think Lou's the problem here aside from, you know, not filling Nick Letty's spot with a viable uh, replacement because, like I said, for the hundredth time, so Daniel Chara wasn't that. Yeah, let me expand on your thinking on that too because they clearly made moves for this season. Zach Parise is this season. So Daniel Chara was this season. Uh, when eventually you move Simeon Varlamov to probably the Edmonton Oilers and you're going to get something back in return, then they could focus on some free agents and stuff like that to fill some holes that they might get next season. And you're probably going to have your starting goaltender being Ilya Sorokin now for forever. 
are they still going to be the same team as Barry Trotz uh, reaching his expiration date? I don't think so. I love Barry Trotz. I think he's a great coach. Mm -hmm. It's, but you're right about that. They have, they have that, that, that free cap space and that's what they're going to do. You know, it's funny. You mentioned Trotz and expiring Um, Arthur Staple actually official official today. He's the full on Rangers beat reporter because Kevin Kurz is taking over for the Islanders this week. Kevin Kurz who wrote for San Jose. Yeah. Oh yep. wow! Yeah, okay. so that's a good that's a good pickup. The staple kind of said his goodbye, you know, for the Islander, the Islander, the yeah. Islander fans today, and you know, twelve years he did a great job. But a couple days ago, he had one of his last articles with the Islanders. He was talking about you know trots and people saying he should get fired, and he brought up a good point. He's like that would be one of the worst moves the Islanders made in years, up there with a Milbury type move. Because um, although the Islanders are struggling right now, um, you you don't you don't really want to move a coach like Barry Trotz no. when he's one of the best coaches in the league uh, of all time and everything they went through, you give him, you give him a pass. I, I, gonna, I, I've yeah. said this. Yeah. It, 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 that if, if, if you, if you get rid of him it, and I, I know I've showed you that comment before, but that I, that I was talking to you guys about, if you get rid of him, you go back to the cap. You're, on a wait days and that would be the one of the worst things that could happen for this franchise so yeah no i i i think um he has made some questionable decisions you know like giving wallstrom not a lot of ice time and he's been you know one of the better players again he's he slowed down for a couple of weeks but you know he's been really hot um you got to play him you got to play him more i know i know he's big on res- defensive responsibility um but you got to trust him his shot his shots elite um you know and you know, aside from, you know, Barzell and, uh, you know, Nelson in terms of like pure skill, you know, he's, he's one of their best players and you got, you got to give him the minutes. Um, you know, so th- there are encouraging things like no adoption aside from that brain dead play he made against Nashville when he wrapped the puck around the boards with 11 seconds instead of eating it or skating with it for a little bit. Um, he's been coming along offensively and, you know, they always say young defensemen, uh, kind of, unless you're like a Cal McCarr, you know, exception to the rule. Or Adam Fox. Yeah, uh, offense comes can come slowly to some of the maturing young defensemen. So in that regard, he's been really good. Um, and Pajot's actually been a lot better since he looked in the beginning of the year. So there's some good things. But um, I think ultimately at the end of the day, the Islanders kind of just play on house money at this point. If you get hot and you get yourself back in the playoff race, uh, sure, that would be great. But – um, there's not really much they could do in terms of shaking things up because, again, um, they don't really have any like rentals that they're going to trade off. Um, so they're kind of in a situation where they're going to ride it out. And honestly, I, I won't be surprised, even if they're not going to make the playoffs, that Lou has an eye on next season already and makes a trade that's not necessarily going to reap the benefits this year, but next year. Um, cause you know, I'm sure Lou believes in this team and he's not gonna, he's not gonna make major changes. Cause no. I think there's a really good chance that next season that the Islanders are, you know, back on track and being a playoff team, which they have been the last three years. So, um, it is what it is. It sucks for the Islander fans, you know, kind of like all the excitement was sucked out of the room with the new building and whatnot with the start they had, but, um, you got to stay positive and just count your blessings for what you do have. Um, and go from there. Now, there's a lot more that's newsworthy with the bottom line that's right there because the Islanders went through their 13-game road trip, and right before they they ended their 13-game road trip, the game that they really wanted was the Tampa Bay game. They lost that one and then lost uh, Florida on top of that. That's what created a four-game losing streak. Going into their building, this is where the news comes in. This week, the NHL postpones games for the, for the Flames and the Hurricanes. The Canes and the, and the Flames have six players on the COVID, on the COVID list. Karen, uh, the Canes have a coach on the COVID list, too. In the meantime, if we go back a month, the Islanders opened UBS Arena and played two more additional games with up to nine players on the COVID list, including Anthony Beauvillier missing the home opener for a... Uh, false positive. A false positive. So, guys, I got to ask you this question: the NHL mishandle this? Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
there, there's no question about it. You, you can't – if you're going to cut this off at six players, if you're going to give an arbitrary number, let's just say nine, ten, something like that, and you're going to let the Islanders go and play with that, then they should have done they, – they should have cut the Islanders off at, at six, seven, and they should have – they should have let Calgary and Carolina play on with as many as they did. The only thing that I can say that works in the NHL's favor in this point is it seems like there's more of a, like we're heading back to where we were almost two years ago, where like we're almost, we look like we're about to go into like maybe another lockdown or something like that. So uh, that's the only thing that really I could say in defense of the NHL, but they, they definitely mishandled it and they didn't do the Islanders any favors at all. I could tell you exactly what it was. It was their opening games at UBS arena the league so dollar signs, uh, and they didn't want to postpone that, uh, you know, even more. And I think it was a, I think it was selfish money grab move uh, for the league to do that. I guarantee you, if there was any situation, if they're still playing at the Coliseum, or they already had their home opener earlier in the year, and then they got hit with COVID, uh, it would have been postponed. Uh, and it's really, it's really disheartening um, that for those reasons, they didn't, they didn't move any of the games because, you know, the Islanders could have, could have used Beauvillier in that home opener. They could have used Adam Pellick in that home opener. Um, you know, so it, it, Anders Lee, their captain. I mean, you kidding me? Like um, it was totally mishandled and I'm glad to see that they're, you know, taking a little more seriously uh, this time around with the other outbreaks. But, um, and I mean, but, but, but I mean, it, that, that completely derailed what anything the Islanders had. It they they were already struggling. They had the four game losing streak going into the home opener, and then became five. So the, the Maple Leafs the very next day six, and then the uh, the Rangers coming into the building seven. Pittsburgh on the day of the Thanksgiving, uh, the day of the Thanksgiving. I uh, see. I'm at a loss for words, and I don't even have a horse in the race. All yeah, the fact that we're covering them now, so it's just it, it's it's frustrating because they needed those games and then they didn't like the, the NHL really it, there were other factors that went into that too the Brock Nelson injury did not help things the Ryan Pollock injury really didn't help things and then now you're at a situation where they're they're basically a second division team fighting to even make it out of the lottery because that's not their their goal is to win a Stanley Cup this year the goal wasn't to, to be in the lottery. I mean, the Rangers goal can, can conversely is to make the playoffs. So if they fall short of that, whatever, but, or, you know what I'm getting at, but the Islanders, they're, they're trying to win a championship here and it's just, yeah. it's just not going to happen. And, yeah, and, and that, it became a reality because of this. And you compounded a bad start on top of all of that. It, it just, it, it does not look good for the Islanders. It really put them in a hole. And it, it sucks because the NHL didn't do them any favors at all. I, I think it's just a dereliction of duty on their part. Um, this whole thing has been mishandled. I, I, I don't know how all these t guys are coming up positive for COVID. It, I, I think the NHL needs to get back to stricter, stricter measures when it comes to this, because you shouldn't have this many players testing positive for this. If, you know, everything is going right. So, And, and also just to say one thing else, uh, we don't know what this new variant is, whether or not it's serious or not, but um, I'm going to leave that to the professionals, but flu problems have gone around the NHL since the beginning of time. So if, if it's, if it's just basically like the flu, what are we doing? I uh, was talking to one of our friends that was on our show about um, COVID just actually yesterday. He was saying that he thinks it's, it's possible that, you know, maybe shortly after the Olympics that the NHL starts allowing um, players who test positive for COVID but are asymptomatic to still play in games and they don't have to go in COVID protocol and games don't have to be postponed. Because uh, mm. let's, let's face it, COVID, you know, COVID's not going anywhere. It's going to change no. from uh, it's going to change from a pandemic to an endemic, probably, you know, sometime in the spring and summer. So, you know, it. For, for games to still get postponed and, and you know, players to get put in protocol uh, and they're totally fine, 
is just silly. Look, I get it. I get if you're legitimately sick. Yeah, they, they, they shouldn't play. But if considering literally every player in the National Hockey League is vaccinated other Except than Tyler, Tyler Bertuzzi, other than Tyler Bertuzzi <laughs> and Mackenzie Blackwood, these guys are positive and asymptomatic and they're vaccinated. No, just, I think Mackenzie Blackwood got it. Yeah, he got it. Just let them play. And I think I think you're going to. I think you're going to see that sometime, you know, in, in the spring, because again, it's, you know, if a guy is fine, I mean, why not, why not let him play? I mean, it's, it's different. If this was a situation where before the vaccine existed, then I, then I could see it. But other than that being how a COVID's going to be around for forever, I don't, I don't think it really makes much sense to have this whole production. Well, cause here's the, cause the question that I have about this, and we didn't have it really happen the last year, but it's still out there. If it's still a protocol, you have to follow the protocol, whatever it is. Health matters more than anything else. What happens if this happens in the Stanley Cup Finals? Well, by then it's going to be the summertime. And, you know, people test positive for gonna, cases. Are gonna, no, I know, I know that, but it's the summertime. So the cases aren't going to be nearly as high as it is right now during the winter. It's just like the flu season. More people yeah. get flu and cold in the winter. Well, and, 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 and that's the thing. And and the history shows it. Uh, it you know, that once the spring and the summer started hitting, the cases started dropping. So uh, it, it just, to me, it, obviously, there's some sort of correlation here. Okay. So let me oh, throw absolutely. this one out there. Because, again, the same thing, argument can be made about concussions. And that's you get to the playoffs – and let's say it's the Stanley Cup Finals between the Edmonton Oilers and uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, which I'm sure ESPN is buzzing about. Um, and what happens is you get one team gets COVID and the other team ends up having concussion problems. And think about the 2015, it was a 2015, 2013 and, uh, Stanley Cup Finals. You had Patrice Bergeron playing with a, a broken rib and... And I think a punctured lung and Jonathan Taves, I think he had a concussion and they hit it from everybody. So yeah. are they protocols that are going to last and they're going to, it doesn't matter what the situation is or are they, or are they just going to go, well, it's an important game. We can't, we can't do this. There's other things the Blackhawks did because of the playoffs. That's a different story. So. I, I, I just think this whole situation um, with with the Olympics too is you can't you can't go play in the Olympics right now. I mean, we mentioned that you know Josh Bailey. Has a More on that in a second, by the way. Well, Actually, tomorrow. Anthony, let me cut you off there. Let's go right to that. Uh, we'll sign off this first. By the way, guys, what do you think about the Islanders? Did they mishandle the COVID, did the NHL mishandle the COVID situation? Are there more problems for the New York Islanders? What would you change about them? Drop it down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.